Hey friends, welcome to our restorative stretchy class for the lower body and welcome to another day in our 30 day series. My name is Molly, I'm happy you're here. As always, if you like this channel or this video, please like, comment, subscribe, share, and I have my Venmo link listed below. If you would feel inclined to donate, that would be amazing. All right, grab some comfy things, grab some props, pillows, bolsters, blankets. In a typical restorative class, like I said, we would hold each of these postures for two to five minutes. Um, since we're just learning, we'll probably more go to the side of two minutes per stretch today and everything will be lower body focused. That being said, if you need to do a little warm up, revisit maybe that vinyasa class um, or do just a simple couple rounds of cat cow, practice your sun salutation if you feel a little stiff and like you wanna do a warm up first because we're gonna get started straight away in a lizard pose. So from a tabletop, step your right leg to the outside of your right hand. Now, this is a good place to slide a bolster underneath your left thigh and your belly, and then grab another pillow or block to place underneath your forearms, or if that feels crazy, you can stay up on your hands. I'm gonna turn to face you a little bit. You start to lower and sink down, start to feel that stretch in the front of the left hip and left thigh. This is a lizard lunge. There's a few options here. So obviously as you open up more, you can take out whatever props you have, lower down onto your elbows. For the first few breaths, let's bring our knee, our right knee to hug in towards our armpit and keep your right big toe plugged into the mat. This is also a really good stretch for the inner right thigh and even into the right hamstring a little bit. That's where I'm feeling it today. And then for the next few breaths, we're gonna open our right knee out to the side and pivot on to the right pinky toe. If this causes any pain in the knee or anything, go ahead and skip it knee or ankle, keep the, the ankle engaged a little bit so we're not sickling out through the foot and collapsing. Let's take about three or four more breaths here. Good, and as simply as you can, walk your upper body upright and switch out. Bring your right leg back and your left leg forward. The bolster is now underneath the right thigh and the belly. Plug your left toe into the mat, hug your left knee in towards center line, and then option to lower down onto a block or onto a bolster. For the next few breaths, you can bring your left knee out to the side and pivot onto the pinky toe side of the foot. Good, as you're ready, walk your upper body back. Come back to a tabletop, so hands and two knees are on the mat. We're gonna move into a pigeon pose, and I'll give a couple options. So the full expression is to bring your right ankle behind your left wrist and your right knee behind your right wrist. You untuck your toes, pull left hip down, and then eventually fold. If that is crazy, what you'll do is come into that deer pose where your knees are, both knees are bent and toes are pointed, or your 90-90 sit that we did a couple days ago. And then you fold over your right shin. So whether the left knee is bent up into deer pose or extended long into pigeon, which is Eka Pada Raja Kapatasana pose, which is fun to say, Think about just letting your upper body rest heavy. Think about sending breath to the outside of the right hip. You can place a, a prop underneath your forehead to let your neck relax and roll your left hip down. Good. 
Another good option is to slide a pillow or a bolster underneath your right hip if it seems to be hovering off in space quite a bit. Just some options. Three more breaths where you are. Good. Roll onto your right hip in order to bring your left leg to the front of the mat. We're gonna find double pigeon pose, which is fire log pose. Your left ankle will come to stack over your right knee and left knee is hovering over right foot. This is a big pose. Use as many props you need in between knee and ankle. This isn't really an open shape particularly for me. This is double pigeon pose. I don't visit it too frequently, but just to kind of wet your whistle with it. And then from here, sit up tall out of your waist, stay upright, or you could fold forward. A really nice um, variation of this is just to find a seat. Instead of stacking the ankle, just cross your ankles. Right shin is in front and you can fold down. Sukhasana is a gentler version of fire log pose. Let's stay here for four or five breaths. Good, lift back up with as much ease as you can. We're gonna switch sides. So let's see, which way was I facing? Roll back onto your right hip. <laughs> Stretch both legs behind you, find a tabletop. And then pigeon pose, you can either bring left ankle behind right wrist with left knee behind left wrist. Extend your le right leg long behind you, untucking your toes. Take a minute to draw your left hip crease back and pull your right hip forward and eventually fold down. Again, option to find deer sit or 90-90 where you bend both knees. At whatever angle feels best for you, and fold down here. Again, find a little bit of ease, relax your jaw and the muscles around your shoulders and neck. Send nice full breaths through your whole body, especially directing it towards that left hip. You can build up the ground up to you in whatever way you need. If you would like to slide that bolster underneath your left hip, that's a good option. Three more breaths. Good, eventually remove your props, roll onto your left hip in order to swing your right leg out in front. Come to double pigeon where you stack right ankle on top of left knee, or if that's way too much, you can cross your right ankle behind your left shin and just find an easy seat. Inhale where you are and exhale to fold. Two more cycles. As you're ready, sit back up. All right, we're gonna find frog pose. Another one I don't visit very frequently, but I would like to just introduce you guys to everything in case you see it in the future. For frog pose, I really recommend having blankets or folding up either end of your mat a couple times to create some extra cushion for your knees. So this is what that looks like, or again, blankets, towels, pillows, whatever you got. All right, frog pose is a big inner thigh and groin opener. You're gonna bring both feet and knees to opposite sides of the mat, trying to bend them about 90 degrees. So perpendicular at the knee and the ankle and the hip. From here, so toes are pointed out to the side, inner side of the foot is grounded. You can start to rock 
back and forth a little bit. Everyone's hip anatomy is very different. So if this doesn't feel good in your body, take child's pose instead. Eventually, maybe you sink your hips back and lower down onto your elbows. Five more cycles of breath wherever you are. Good, lift back up. Really gently and really slowly come out of the pose. Scooping one foot underneath your body to roll back onto your sit bones. All right. Extend your right leg long. Bring your left foot to the inner seam of your right thigh. We're gonna find you Janu Sursasana. Inhale to sit up tall out of the waist. Feel free to roll something up underneath your sit bones to let your pelvis kind of tilt forward. And then exhale, fold over your right leg. So this is a hamstring stretch. I'm actually not a huge fan of really taking extended hamstring stretching. Um, if it was me, I would probably put a towel, a rolled up towel underneath my right knee just to keep a little bend in it. But just an idea. Go ahead and take three or four breaths in your hamstring stretch. You'll feel it in the low back as well, maybe in the left side of the back. Good, sit back up. Janu Sursasana on the other side. Extend your left leg long. Bring the bottom of your right foot to your inner left thigh. Inhale to sit up tall. You could slide that towel roll underneath the left knee and then exhale, fold. Two more breaths. Good, inhale, lift back up. Let's find a stretch for our quads. We're gonna find, let's do a hero's pose, but very modified. So hero's pose, Virasana, just so you know, is where your hips are in between your heels, your feet are pointing back behind you, and then you lower all the way down. This is a big stretch for the front body, but kind of challenging. So let's find a pillow or a bolster and place it in between your heels and your bottom. From here, sit your butt down. Feel what this feels like. And if you're ready, you can lean back a little bit. So if you need another bolster or a couple blocks to meet you halfway, you can put them underneath your hands. Point your kneecaps forward. If there's any pain in the knees, skip this pose. And then maybe lower down onto your forearms or take the blocks out as you open more into the front body. Find a little bit of a tucking under of your tailbone to take out excessive arch in the low back. Just a few more breaths. Good. slowly, gently stack your shoulders over your hips, lift out any props you use and come to lay on your back. Take your time getting there. Last pose of the day. By the way, just another quad stretch you could do is laying on your side and pulling your heel in towards your glute and then switching sides if Virasana hurt your knees at all. We're gonna end with a happy baby. So lay into your back. Knees come out to the edges of your rib cage and then press your heels up like they could stay up the sky. 
From here, you can hold on to your underneath of your thighs or the front of your shins and ankles, or if you can reach them all the way to the outsides of the feet. Really soften your inner thighs and your groin and your pelvic floor with your in breaths. And then on your out breaths, think about gluing your low back, your sacrum down to the mat. Inhales to soften. And exhales to sink. Three more breaths. Good, big exhale, let it go. Release your legs. Take one more breath here. And then roll onto your side. Come to a seat. All right, so those were some really common stretches and more restorative long held shapes that you will find in yoga classes for the lower body. I hope it gives you some ideas to work through um, maybe it's something you visited before, but it's definitely something you'll see again. So I'm glad you're here. Thanks for being here and I'll see you next time.